Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we're in Ephesians chapter 2. And I uh, want to actually read uh, our portion of Scripture today in the journey through the Bible from Ephesians 2. And then let's talk just for a few minutes today about how it is that, that we are brought near. God brings us all near to Himself by the grace of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for that. And uh, so if you would, hear the word of the Lord. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews, who were proud of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope, but now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to Him through the blood of Christ. For Christ Himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when, in His own body, on the cross, He broke down the wall of hostility that separates us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Well, friends, unity in the church is really the kind of primary theme of, uh, of, F, uh, of the, the letter, Paul's letter to the Ephesians church. And, uh, and, and of course, you know, that, that unity being lost in the church can happen in so many ways. Unfortunately, uh, division can come so easily. And, and of course, this is why Paul tells us elsewhere as he's led by the Spirit to make every effort to maintain unity, the, this, this peace and unity in the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and so it, it seems, as we're seeing one of these themes of this theme of unity in Ephesians, that, that the primary division is coming, this, this division is between Jew and Gentile, who have both become believers, and and we can I think we can understand this because there had been such a a pattern of division, and there had been such hostility historically uh, between the two, and and we see here that in this section he's addressing primarily Gentile believers, but of course, you know Jewish believers would have gotten the point too, you know even though he's addressing the Gentiles directly that uh, he says, Gentiles, yes, you at one time were not a part of the people of God. You didn't know God, and therefore you had no peace. You had no hope. He's, he says, you didn't know, and you had no access to the promises of God. You, you were far away from God and just without, without hope. And, and there's, I think, a, a helpful image in, in seeing the, the temple and how the Gentiles were kept out and what a big deal it was for Gentiles to get to get near to the to the temple there's there's something about that image that helps us see how how far away the Gentiles were how far we, away we were and how close now God has brought us in in Jesus Christ and so let me just share briefly from the book of Acts this, uh, this first passage is from, uh, from Acts 21, and what we see here is that Paul is in Jerusalem and he meets with James. There's, there's an attempt here to, to kind of soften the relationship between Gentile believers and Jewish believers. The, the Jewish believers were having a real problem with Paul and, and his, his teaching where, that the law had been superseded by the gospel, and 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 so they're trying to kind of soften that a bit. And so Paul is going to do this this kind of um, 
uh, ritual purification. Well, let's read beginning in verse 26 what happens. So Paul went to the temple the next day with the other men. They had already started the purification ritual, so he publicly announced the date when their vows would end and sacrifices would be offered for each of them. The seven days were almost ended when some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul in the temple and roused a mob against him. They grabbed him, yelling, Men of Israel, help us! This is the man who preaches against our people everywhere and tells everybody to disobey the Jewish laws. He speaks against the temple and even defiles this holy place by bringing in Gentiles. For a day, for, for earlier that day, they had seen him in the city with Trophimus, Trophimus, a Gentile from Ephesus, and they assumed Paul had taken him into the temple. The whole city was rocked by this accusation and a great riot followed. So you can see what, what a big deal this was. The idea that uh, a Gentile from Ephesus, no less, that a, a Gentile had been brought into the temple courts, that this uncircumcised Gentile had been brought near to the temple. And, and listen now, I think this is, this is very intentional, how, uh, how Luke writes this in Acts chapter 22 about the calling of Paul to go to those who are far off. After I returned to Jerusalem, I was praying in the temple and fell into a trance. I saw a vision of Jesus saying to me, Hurry, leave Jerusalem, for the people here won't accept your testimony about me. But Lord, I argued, they certainly know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And I was in complete agreement when your, wit your witness Stephen was killed. I stood by and kept the coats they took off when they stoned him. But the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. So you can, you can hear this now. This Gentile is not allowed to get near the temple. And Paul, as he receives his calling, it is to go far off. And, and friends, this isn't as much about geography as it is about separation from God. So God brought the Gentiles near in Jesus Christ, made peace with himself through the sacrifice of Jesus. But also, what we see is that Jesus is forming a new humanity, a new people in himself. And so he is actually making peace, not only between a Gentile and God, he's making peace between Jew and Gentile. Jesus comes and he is the fulfillment of the law. And he, because of that, he provides this fundamental unity because the basis is not whether you're meeting the, the law, whether you're circumcised, this and that. The, the unity, the fundamental unity is not in the law, but in Jesus, in what he has accomplished for us. And I want to ask you to notice how close in the scripture here indicates God has actually brought us in Jesus, that he has made one people. There were these two divided people, and, and he's brought them together. The Gentiles were, were not a part of the people of God. Now they're citizens along with God's people. Uh, the, the scripture indicates that we're a part of the same family, that, that all, as they come into Christ, are brothers and sisters now. We are part of of God's family, uh, we're, we're brought into the body of Christ. We're knit together like the pieces of uh, the parts of, of a body, a human body, and that we're built together into God's holy temple. And think about the power of that now for the Gentiles who, you know, a believer from Ephesus was hanging out with Paul and when all of this mob kind of came about. So how powerful to hear that you weren't allowed into the inner courts of the temple, right? You had to stay far off. But now, not only are you allowed into the temple, but you are being, together with the other believers, you are being built into a holy temple unto the Lord with Christ as the cornerstone, that your church family, as you're drawn together, 
as God puts the pieces of this church family together, you are actually a holy temple. You are a dwelling place for God. God's very presence is in your midst, church. It says that we all have the same access now, Jew and Gentile alike, through Jesus Christ. We have access to the same God through the Holy Spirit because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so, you know, in response to this, we have to think, you know, what is the application today? It is to thank God, first of all, because we too were far off. We thank God that we've been brought near, and, and this, <laughs> the Scripture describes, it describes every way that you could think of being brought together, built together, one body, a family, one people, and so forth. God has brought us so near to Him, and in fact, He has taken up residence in our hearts, and He is binding us together. He's binding us together in Christ, and so we thank God for this. But also, friends, it seems to me that this is a calling. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a fresh calling to ministry. This is a reminder that we are ambassadors of Christ, that we have this precious ministry of the gospel. How many people today are so very alienated, are so very lonely? And not just lonely as in, I don't have anybody to talk to, but I mean cosmically lonely. How many people are without hope in this world because they do not know God? And so we hear again this calling to offer people Christ to love people enough to offer them Christ, that they too might be brought near by His grace. And may it be so in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.